This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Well, aloha, and how you doing? Welcome to another exciting and thrilling episode of Ibaji Talk. Go to the Texar here with my good old buddies from the healthcare field. I got Rick's the Fun Meister. Hey, Gordo. Larry J. Smith. Hi, Gordo. I've known you for decades. Yeah, that's right. Yes, I remember when you had hair. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> grab yourself a libation to pull up, and we're going to talk about um, healthcare. We've kind of been thematic over the past number of weeks about healthcare and why it's so damn expensive and so on. So the theme we're going to talk about today is like, what can you do to lower your cost of healthcare? So, and there's a lot of things you can do. And we got two people who've been in the healthcare industry. How long have you been in the healthcare industry? 40 years. 40 years. And you've been in the healthcare industry? Yeah, probably the same. 40 years. Yeah, so two more people than I can count. Yeah, I've yeah. been in it about a dozen. So <laughs> I'm, I'm the baby here. So you're going to educate us. Um, so it's great to have you here. Um, so Larry, just to get a little bit of background, so we, so the, so our viewers know who you are. Like, you know, obviously you grew up yeah. in Kakaako. I can tell by the accent. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I started out, uh, been in healthcare since, well, since before Medicare, basically, since about 1970s, and I came here in 1982 to work at Queens, okay. and then went away to Texas and San Francisco, and then came back and worked at Straub, and then went to. Seattle for a while, and now I'm back here. And you've always been in the healthcare from a financial standpoint, Correct. right? Correct. So you're not a doc. I'm not a doc. You're not a I'm nurse. A, you're not a clinician. I'm an accountant. Uh, you're an accountant, right. right? Okay, so you've got that. And then, yeah. then Mr. Maurer, do you have something similar background, or how does I, that work? Yeah, actually, yes. And Larry and I, you know, intersected uh, a couple of times as well. But, yeah. And over the years, at, at a number of healthcare yeah. providers, uh, including Queens, yes, Kaiser. Queens, Kaiser, Kaiser, Queens again. Queens again, somewhere um, in San Francisco. In the San Francisco Bay Area, and then I was a Medicare auditor, was actually what got So me you got healthcare. a lot of, so we're gonna talk to you today about how you, as an individual, how we can, we can somehow lower our healthcare costs. Because yeah. I can't count on government to help me lower my healthcare <laughs> costs, guys. I'm sorry. I've given up on them. You know, and <laughs> I was thinking about it just before the show, and you know, my Medicare, monthly bill went up by nearly 30 percent this year so, whoa see so, yeah i mean it wasn't just in just you know the non uh, non-medicare and do you get a or, discount yeah. for not using it because i don't hardly use health care <laughs> no i don't that's right no 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 so um, anyway so last week we talked and larry I'm gonna throw, throw up the chart we showed last week about the the rising costs of uh, health care insurance premiums and I'm, I'm looking forward to your commentary on this. So, so this, is, this is like last week we talked about this. It's like, look at HMSA for large businesses, small businesses, individual, Obamacare plans, Kaiser, and all the increases. So, so why the hell is all this stuff going up in price? In which I can, one of the questions I have is that these premium increases were approved by the State Health Insurance Commissioner. Okay, so the so, State Health Insurance Commission approved these increases. Right. Yes. So why doesn't the insurance commissioner push back and get the quest, get the answer to the question of why they increased? Yeah, and why? What if, what if the insurance commissioner said no? Yeah, what if the insurance yeah. commissioner just said no, no, you can't increase it. That's you right. have to get better you have to get better at what you're doing. That's right. You're asking us yeah. to take better care of our health. What do you take better care of your company? That's right. Yeah. And because because healthcare, as we've all discussed and know, is extremely complex. Yes. So going into these premium calculations is the fact that the population is aging. Uh, you've got health uh, drug costs that are going up substantially. Uh, you've got still uninsured people. So there's a, there are a lot of things that go into the pot that impact the health care costs. But those premiums were basically set by the insurance companies. Yeah. And so the the question I have is did the insurance commissioner who's kind of responsible That's for knowing detail, all by of the way, these just things, uh, yeah. names. Then what if has that insurance commissioner or an insurance commissioner in Hawaii ever said no yeah. to a premium increase? Right. And I, I don't know that question. I, don't I, know the I, answer to I that. would venture to say, I, I, I would put at least a, a Guinness on it that the answer has been they've never said no. And, well, and, I wouldn't know. go that far. Okay. But, <laughs> but. I, I think that they have probably pushed back and lowered it. But have they lowered it significantly? 
I that's the I think that's the question. So where and, are all these? And the, but I think you raise a great point, Larry, and it's the head scratcher to me too. Is why we yeah. know that they've gone up. We've read that in the paper. I haven't read in the paper like, the why. The, the why exactly. Exactly. And and you guys and you guys have been in this business for a long time, yeah, right? Yeah, and you yeah. you understand the underlying underlying pieces that happen. So I'm going to just hit you with some statistics, some numbers that will help mm -hmm. uh, help us maybe help understand maybe the why. I'm not sure, yeah. but um, throw up the slide where I got the medical data is expected to double every 73 days by 2020. So medical data. So this is the data, the medical data that's being gathered right now every. 73 days it's going to double by 2020. So in 2020, medical data related to whatever's happening yeah. around this country is going to double. Where the hell is that all going to be kept? Who's going to keep it? Exactly. Yeah. The gorilla yeah. in the house is epic. Yeah. 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 Because now I think the reason the data is doubling is right now you still have a lot of data that is in paper charts in doctor's offices. Yes. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, people are going to be pulled, yelling and screaming, into automation. And then somehow figure out how then to pull together the that data. And that's why it, there's the increase. The increase. Yeah. So they think yeah. in 2020 that more of the the, the MDs or the, your primary care provider yeah. will yeah. be off of the paper chart and onto a uh, electronic, electronic chart. And, yeah, and I think people are, you know, are moving to there, you know, much more than when Larry and I first started right. in this. But, you know, it's more the ancillary pieces around, you know, that are, that are part of the pie. And But there's but so the many of thing, these yeah, pieces. You bring up a really good point, too, uh, is that it's going to explode, yeah. but who's going to keep it? And how are they going to keep it safe? And how are they going to authenticate that the records that's are right. correct? Are so that's why I go back yeah. to blockchain. You guys yeah. are sick of me talking about no, it. No, but I'm going to bring it it's up. It's so true yeah. because yeah. everybody. I want to put everything in Epic. By the way, Epic is the 800-pound gorilla in the house yeah. here. For those, for the viewers, Epic is the electronic medical record of choice, choice for most. Yeah. Hospitals, and hospitals in the country. Yeah, right. If you can afford it, that's the one. Epic, where you, you know, go. there's Cerner is yeah. another provider, um, and I can't remember who the other also brands are. But you know, Epic essentially is the 800-pound right. gorilla in yeah. the house. Um, most healthcare providing organizations uh, use it. They've right. got your medical record all around the country. Yeah. Right. Um, and you you mentioned something earlier. We're going to bring up really uh, is uh, is that so so let me just flip to the next slide, and this will lead me to the next piece of the data part. So techno technology is one piece. So the other slide is the average the average person is likely to generate more than one million gigabytes of health related data in their lifetime. That's three three hundred million books, and we're not talking Filipinos here. <laughs> 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 no, book books. This is 300 million books. So, 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 first of all, I started going, why are we gathering one hell of a lot, so much information? That may be rising the cost. But, so we got all of this happening now, too. Yeah, right. Where are we keeping this? Yeah, Who's right. paying for this? It will, well, as a hospital CFO, when you got the annual budget for the IT department, <laughs> the, <laughs> the cost over the last four to five years was huge because you needed more data storage capacity. Right. But still, that was kept in your hospital. Right. And like, how to, then the, one of the challenges you have is how does that data get to some national uh, repository of all that stuff? So there's we go back to the you when we started yeah. the beginning. When we started yeah. the beginning of the show, it's like, what can you do? Correct. So, why don't you tell me about this application you just told me about when we were having right, lunch right. that I didn't even knew existed. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, because Gordo asked me to talk about what, as an individual, you can do. Right. And so first, uh, just thinking about healthcare costs, if you look at it from an age of patient perspective, uh, kids in their teens, in their 20s, and mid-30s don't really consume that much health care. Unless they have babies or Or they accident. break yeah. fall, right. or break their leg on a yeah. skateboard or do you know, those stupid things. And then as they, you know, you get into your 30s and your 40s, you more, and then when you, trust me, get into your 50s and 60s and 70s, significantly more. And so in looking at what can you do as an individual to control your health care costs, uh, the extent of what you do depends on your age and where, you're, where you are in that continuum. And so I think uh, maybe if you're, you know, you're 
under the age of 30, you don't have to worry so much. But if you're over that, the first thing you need to do is you need to get a primary care physician. Okay. And everyone should have a primary care physician uh, that you would go to at, probably at least annually. Mine yells at me because I don't. At least <laughs> annually. He's always on my case. <laughs> and so, and so then, but the, then but when you're selecting a primary care physician, I think you need to now ask questions. Okay. And to me, you can, and actually the good thing is now you can pretty much go in line, online and you can find where, the, where this physician went to school and where they did their residency and their internship yep. and what their specialties and interests are, right. which Beauty is good. So you got to do, you know, you got to do that much research. But then I think when you talk to your, talk to a potential PCP that you would want to use, you need to ask them if they have an electronic health record. Right, if they're still doing it in um, paper but, records, you, you need to go find another doc. You know? <laughs> <laughs> because if they're, still doing, if they're still doing paper. Yeah. yeah. Or they have a computer, some kind of, you know, small computer system that's just in their office. Uh, I think you need to look elsewhere. Because the first thing you, you want to ask them if they have a record, you want to ask them if you as the patient can access your record and understand exactly what is in your There's record. There's something I never thought about asking. You need to know what that doctor wrote about you. Yes. And that, some doctors get really sensitive about that. But then a, a bigger thing is we look at the total cost of health care and we look at, at your total care, is, is that data then shared with other hospitals, other providers, and other specialists? And is, is it shared across the state, but also across the country if you travel? Or, yeah, if you, yeah. If you go into another, another state. And so, and, and if we say Epic is the 800-pound right, gorilla right. in this in the room right. in this area, um, and, and if you go to a healthcare provider that's using Epic, for the most part, it's all, it's, I would say in Hawaii, almost everybody. Everyone. Um, yeah. Your record is there. So why not let me take my record with me wherever I want to go? That's right. Yeah. It's because I think the, you know, what you need to be worried about is if you do travel, and you're in Chicago, or you're in Dallas, or somewhere, on, you know, somewhere and something happens to you, you want the emergency room physician that sees you to be able to go onto his computer or her computer in the emergency room and look at your record here in Hawaii. Right. To understand what you might have um, uh, allergies to, to understand maybe what just has happened to you medically here. What meds you might be on. What, and what lab tests you have. So that and they, the results of those tests. Yeah. Which you can see without having to do the tests again. So again, right. lowering mm -hmm. the cost. Lowering the cost. I go yeah. to Chicago. I drop into Chicago, and they say, "Oh, we got to run all this blood work." Yeah. But if I yeah. was already at my PCP a right. month before, yeah. why not just look at it the, there? Right. Well, or mm -hmm. you can even if you you know if you if you've you've had lab work in the last two or three months, and then you go into the emergency room with something weird going on, they can look at what were your normal lab results. Right. back here in Hawaii and what are your lab results in that emergency room and they can being a clinician they can say oh this has gone kaflui so there's something wrong over here <laughs> that's a new medical yeah, yeah I know yeah. Yeah. And and the know, record that's one of the leading medical causes thing. of kaflui-ness kaflui yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or Kapokahi, which is the local. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Or, um, uh, as, as the governor said during the nuclear the blast, <laughs> Hamajai. <laughs> we got <laughs> someone Hamajai. Anyway, so, so okay. anyway, so yeah, so yeah, so pretty much, if you're talking, you know, oh. here most of the of the major healthcare systems and a lot of the physicians are on Epic, which is a, a software company, and then their product is called oh. MyChart. Okay, MyChart. So hold it right okay. there because yeah. we're going to take a break. Okay. So so we just talked about how you can take your medical record with you wherever you go. Right. And I want to, I'm going to pose to you, viewers that are watching this, how many of you know about my, my chart? chart? And we're going to talk about that in a minute when we come back after this break. Larry, Larry J. Smith, expert in healthcare, not, not from bad. a doctor's side, but <laughs> from the finance side. Rick's the fundmeister. More money than who knows no, who ever has. No, we don't yeah, go, we there. go there. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be back in a minute after the break. With This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff, MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. 
elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science, and care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational, so I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science. Welcome back, and welcome with us here today, Angus. And You've got you've got some information for us on a new drug that you've been uh, working Lad, on. You know, you're at the healthcare. You know, I'm trying, we're trying to be thematic, and I want to make sure I get the right kind of healthcare. Hey, Larry, I like your new haircut. Oh, thank you. Are you, are you trying to copy me, Lad? Look at this. It's really nice. Look at this. Really, you got my wee bowl of head right here. Looking good on you. All right. Or off you. You know what we say. Anyway, you know, I figured out I got I got my own uh, my own healthcare drug that takes care of me. You know, Gordon's got to take Geritol because he's an old butt. And you, gotta, you can't move around. But I got my new drug, and I got a picture of it here. I got a wee lassie, she demonstrated it for me. It's called Screw It All. This is what I'm gonna do from now on. I go to hell, just get a screw it all. It costs too much money. I'm just gonna show up whatever I want. And if they don't take care of me, I'm gonna sue them. That's it. That's my healthcare solution for the month. <laughs> sue them. Or, well, no, I gotta say that. Anyway, that's it. That's Angus here. Uh, screw it all. You can find it in stores. Close to you. <laughs> anyway, you say every show, but you're being gay free. Where you be? Hello, ha, screw it all. <laughs> well, well, thanks very much, Angus. <laughs> it looks like that's that's. I'm not sure if that's working for you, but you're happy. I'm and happy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, he seems to have figured it all out. Anyway, we, we took a break, and before we took a break, you mentioned this. Um, uh, my chart. My chart. So, so just to give you, so how I not knew nothing. So we were having lunch. And Larry says to me, well, you know, I just go to my MyChart app and all my healthcare records are there. And I went, what my chart? what's this MyChart app? Right. And we go right there in the restaurant. I go, I download the MyChart app. And now I've got to go through some processes. Right. But so See, tell us what that is. So MyChart is an application that's part of this, this epic system. It's free, by the way. It's free. And the, and the whole idea is my chart is your record. And this is the way you interact with your physician your providers, it's the way you can go in and understand what's happening with you. And so it's, it's, it's a great application and what happens is after you get my chart and get used to it, when you need a prescription refill, when you need just to ask your physician something like, a dog just bit me, should I come in? Okay. Uh, then the, you, that's, you can do that by my chart and usually physicians tend to be very good or the or physician's uh, staff in responding back to you with, I've, I've sent your uh, refill request to the pharmacy uh, and, and giving you some stuff where they'll say, I think you need to come in. So, as, but then you can also, uh, what I like about it is you can go in and it gives you all your lab work. So if you went, like last week I went in, had lab work done on Thursday. On Saturday I get a, an email that says your lab results are in, go to, go to my chart and check your lab results. And so you can go in my chart and see your lab results and you hit a button and then it will trend your lab results over the, over the history that you've time got. that you've been in the yeah. particular that, system. Yeah. Right, and the key thing, especially when you're going to have to talk to your doctor, it shows you what the, the acceptable range of outcome is. So you're sitting there looking at your lab work and you're, you're seeing the trend and all of a sudden if you go over the acceptable range, you know that you and the doctor are gonna have a serious conversation. A chit chat mm -hmm. on what's about, happening on peace. Yeah, which, and so, so that's that's available. And that's on me. So that, that's we go back to what can you do? What, can, yeah, what can we right. do to as an individual um, prohibit the situation where a catastrophic event is happening because I'm paying attention to what's going on with my health. Right, right. right. So this in and, and also I think the other thing which which now gets into where is all this new data coming from yeah. and the new expanded uh, information that's out there. One of the things you need to hold your physician's feet to the fire about is the quality of the documentation that's put into my chart. Because this is also the same, this is the documentation right. in your health record. Right. And so uh, you want that physician to be as precise as, as he or she can be in documenting 
what, the, what you discussed and what you found when, you, when they looked at your lab work and they had a discussion with you in your office visit. Right. Because when you do show up in Chicago and it's a big emergency, you want that doctor or Las Vegas or, because most yeah, of them, uh, most of our residents yeah. fly yeah, to Las Vegas. Right. So, when you have the heart attack after winning the jackpot, that, that's right. You <laughs> want to make sure that that chart is complete, and that everything that's going on with you, be it diabetes or weight or alcoholism or obesity, is documented correctly and and completely in that chart. And you can you can see that and hold your doctor accountable because the, the reason there's beginning to be more uh, data is doctors recognize they need to put that in because now the, the government and the, the people who are compiling data right. want improved documentation. Correct. So you can have and the, the researchers yeah, want it. Exactly. And the, and the drug companies want exactly. it. That's why I go back yeah. to blockchain and right, how that right, could possibly right, work. Right. But all of the, but all of that's happening out there. That data yeah. is extremely valuable. And we right. talked about from a hacker standpoint, a medical record is like 45 bucks right now if mm -hmm. someone can hack and get your medical record and if it's a, a credit card it's like three cents yeah. so this gives you a sense of how important that data yeah. is and so that's and that's one of the things that's happening is you know there maybe there's there are statistics that people are sicker or they're whatever but what the really what's happening is I think physicians in, in where I worked before our younger physicians were learning to improve their documentation to get it in that chart. Well, they, mm -hmm. then I would think that the result would be that I would get better care. Exactly. I wouldn't have to be waiting as long. Right. Um, much of it could possibly be done online. Exactly. Without exactly. us having to go into the office. So now we're looking at different, these are all different ways that we can manage the cost okay. and bring yeah. the cost down, yeah. and then also the insurance commissioner saying, "No." Yeah, because yeah. you can because you're basically you know you can finally answer the question: Is the population of patients getting sicker or less sick, and why? Yeah, and and so that's uh, that's one reason you know that's one reason for having it and. The, these efforts by, you know, you talked about, you know, the, there's now this new venture with Amazon and uh, right. Chase Bank. Say, Chase Bank, right. Yeah, and Berkshire, and Berkshire Hathaway. Hathaway. Right. Hathaway. Going to create their own insurance company. Right. And, and I love they're, it. They're going to collect data. Yes. And, and so they're, they're going to want to monitor, and Medicare already is monitoring for Medicare patients how sick you are, and there are um, weighting factors that are applied to different conditions. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when your insurance, so as far as what your insurance premium will be and how you do all of that sort of stuff, if you have the good clinical documentation, there are now processes that will, that where the insurance companies in Medicare can say, we're going to pay the providers based upon how, how ill you are, how sick you are. Right. And, and, and that's and, documented and real, not surmised. It's in the chart. It's, it's, in, it's in, in the, the electric chart. Yeah. yeah, one of the companies that, that I've been following is a Serious Computer Solutions. They've stood up a lab in Southern California, and they've got a lot, all kinds of technology, including uh, they have a, 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 an EPIC stand up right. there, and they can, they can simulate a 2,000-bed hospital and all the records right. associated right. with that, and, and they've tied it with Watson Health and a whole bunch of uh, partnering with IBM right. and, and, and such over there. So I'm excited about that too because, again, it's about what they can create that will allow us to control what we can do to right. control right. our health costs. Right. right. And it, but it all gets back to if you see the doctor and the doctor doesn't put, record the information. I got my yellow and, notepad here. And but record it so it can be compiled and then that data can be pulled together to, it impacts uh, premiums, it impacts all kinds of things. Well, how they get paid, and, how they well, get paid. And also, ultimately, the research that goes into how are we cared for, because if we have that information, we, you know, we, can, we can study that and get to better, out, right. better care, better outcome. And you bring in and you bring in things like Watson Health and, and yes. I I would encourage our viewers to go online and just check what Watson Health is happening in that particular right. space because there's medical journals that come out every day. There's no way a, a, your PCP, your primary care physician you can, can read right. every medical journal right. that comes out every day on causes of high blood pressure, cholesterol, whatever those kinds of things are. But the technology can help them right. do a better job yeah. in diagnosing yeah. and 
Yeah. Prescribing what yeah. needs to be done. Right. And, and then and getting yeah. to it faster. Right. And then cutting, kind of cutting edge technology now with Epic is once they have the improved documentation, Epic now sets up a log. So you're, if you'd have your primary physician and that physician would have a, a nurse practitioner that would help them. And it, they would have your data and based upon your data, it would give the nurse practitioner a work list every day that says, oh, Gordo, based upon his age and his clinical issue, needs to come in next week for a lab work or for a physician visit. So it's proactive. So, yeah, which is some of the stuff that That's Amazon different. is, yeah, mm -hmm. is, that Amazon is trying to get to. That you know they already Epic has the functionality to do that. So you can have a nurse every morning that sits down and says, "I have a panel of a hundred patients, and out of my hundred patients that are high risk patients, so when you get older, right, for example, and have a lot of complexities, <laughs> that nurse can sit down in the morning and say, "I've got a here's a list of twenty patients that I need to contact today, and the system tells me what I need to ask them to do." Wow. And then, and, and they can pre-stage so they, they yeah. don't eat the night, the night before because exactly. you're going to so have these particular so lab tests yeah. done. Plus, we're not going to over lab test you. We're just going to do the ones that, that you, you need, need to have, yeah. right. not we so, think you yeah. need to have. So that's the that's the real cutting edge now of that technology where yeah the where the physician's office is going to be proactive. So let's go. So we only got about a minute and change to so go. Let's go back to the you. So this is mm -hmm. our message to the viewers on this. So what do what do we need to do? I downloaded the app. I'm getting so, the app. I just did it. At lunchtime today so and I'm getting set up on that PCP, for sure. But go into and you can go into pretty much the website of any of the three big hospital systems in Hawaii. In Hawaii, right? And the, you, I bet you can find my chart or apply for my chart on that website, right? And there's there's a access code number that you've got to get from the hospital. You put that in, and you're pretty much there. You're pretty much there, and, and then, now your chart now. And that the beauty of this this means your chart follows you wherever you go. Yeah. Yeah. Think about this, ladies and gentlemen. So when you're getting on your round trip Hawaiian Airlines flight to go to Vegas you got your medical record with you when you're right. going there, which it's yeah. like, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, and it, the cost of my chart, I looked online, it was, a, it was it nothing. Yeah. It was free 99, so that's on us. Right. I'm getting mine, I'm, I'm completing mine today. Now my doc's gonna start yelling at me because I never show up for about two and a half years. <laughs> well, yeah, that'll happen. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna be like, uh, I'm gonna start getting emails. Yeah. You need to come in this week. Right. <laughs> Because your health profile will say that at your age and with your complexity of diagnoses, right. this is the, the right thing not to do. Not excessive, but the right thing to do. The right thing to do and, and bring you in. So it's, so it's, it'll reduce health care costs over time. It's the best thing for you. And it'll get the, the whole country the data we need to, to improve health care in total. Yeah, so you want to add something to this? No. I'm I think, good, so I'm because I, well, I've used it and you know, been on the mainland and had to go to... Uh, an emergency room, and I had been in, in the doctor, you know, like three days before, and in the ER, the doctor could pull, pull it up, it. knew everything that had happened to me just three days before, 2,500 miles away. Yeah, so this is on you, ladies and gentlemen. This is, on, this is the point. This is on you. You need to go and get yourself your records set up. You do it with your bank accounts and everything. Get your records set up. Start managing your records, and we'll start to figure out ways to lower the cost of health care. Donald Trump's going to take care of drugs because he said so last night in the State of the Union. So we got that taken care of. And What's then, Angus say about and that? And Angus one? has got screw it all, so he's happy. And then and 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 and, and then we've got to start, you know, in, encouraging people to start saying, why are my premiums going up? Like you would said earlier, Larry. Like why? You know, the insurance commissioner needs to say, no. We've got all this records that show that people are managing, managing. Yeah. I'm managing our healthcare, healthcare yeah. record. Yeah. Exactly. That's it. Okay, cool. Okay, well, thank you guys. You're going to get uh, Solo Cup, Solo Cup 148. All right. In this, this is your second in a series. They're not in link, so that way you can't double dip and overcharge when you're selling them on eBay or Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Larry, I love having you on the show, and I want to have you come oh, that's back. Great. And we're going to talk more and more about healthcare over the. We're going to be thematic over the course of the year. Thank all of you for watching. We'll see you next week. And like we say at the end of every show, one, two, three. How are you, you doing? doing? <laughs> that was nicely. Excellent.